Today we have a lighting tutorial for you using a very special technique with the Dado Light light stream system. To demonstrate we have a simple scene with our model walking down some stairs, taking a swing on some rings and cutting some vegetables at her end position. Now what is so interesting about this scene is that all of the light here is indirect light. So we have no light sources directly hitting our model. And on top of that, we didn't have to use any flags to shape or control that light. Hi, my name is Remco and this is Lena. And today we want to show you how to light a scene using reflected light and near parallel light beams. So what we have today is two different scenes. One is here in the living room and another in a bathroom. And the reason we want to show you this bathroom is because reflected light really shines in these confined and challenging spaces. What are we using for this tutorial? Well, we're using the light stream system. What's the light stream system? It is comprised of a near parallel light source and reflectors. Now, these things work in conjunction with each other. We're using dado lights, and these are very precise focusing instruments. We can even improve on their performance by adding a parallel beam adapter. What it does is it focuses the light and we get a light source with minimal dispersion. This is very useful because parallel light is much less affected by the inverse square law. In other words, the fall off that we see with, for example, soft sources. And we can use this to our great advantage if we are able to play and redirect with the light. We do that using reflectors. And there are four different reflectors in the light stream system. They are numbered one, two, three and four, and they differ by the amount of diffusion they generate. Number one is a almost mirror-like surface, and it is best used for redirecting light from your light source. And the four is really a soft bounce. The system is based around a sliding plate and a adapter and a simple lollipop system. The lollipop system is quite uh, useful. You can change the direction as well as turn it around. So really quite a lot of freedom. There's a ring here which you can loosen and it allows you to slide the plate. You can use that to change the position so for fine tuning and you can also completely take it off. Now you can swap it out for a different reflector um, but what you can also do is simply keep the clamp mounted and take the whole thing off. A bit about the location. We're here in a building that's completely made out of wood and the architects that designed this put in quite a few interesting features. Um, the most dominating feature is this large window here. It's facing the southwest and today it's very stormy and very cloudy, uh, which is actually a little bit to our advantage because we don't have any direct sunlight coming in. Still, it's a lot of light to deal with. As you can see, the backlight from the window is really quite strong and we can't beat that. So a better idea is to close the curtains. We can just leave a small piece of it open about this or even less, depending on how much light is coming in. So that's a good way of regulating it. In the opposite northeast side of the room, we've closed the blinds on the kitchen windows, but we deliberately let the window at the top of the stairs open because it gives us very diffuse texture to the room and provides us with the exposure we need for the background. Now let's take a look at the build-up of our lights. First we have our key, followed by our backlight, and then a nice and subtle scratch. Let's go over how we created each of those sources. What we have here is a key light, and it's just a regular DLED7, and it's spotted in 
to a reflector. And this is a number four reflector. This is providing a very nice, very soft key light on our model. What I really like about the quality of the light is the fall off. It's very gradual. Even though it's a quite a small source, especially on the cheeks, the fall off is, is really quite beautiful. And the second thing we have is a backlight. But where do we put our stands? An interesting feature about the house we're in is it has a glass pane in the floor. It's meant to provide some daylight to the hallway below it. But in this case, we're going to use it to send some light in the other direction. So one of the cool things you can do with these near parallel light sources is you can hide them in all sorts of places. Here we actually managed to get the whole light fixture outside of a room we're shooting in. So you basically just have the DLED 7 with the parallel beam attachment and pointing right up there. And it's coming all the way from below, which is a distance of about four meters. And then we have it maybe three meters more to our model. That's a quite a long distance. Uh, and what this does is it provides a really nice, natural looking backlight. And it's almost as if it's coming from outside. The motivation for it is actually pretty good as well, because we already have the light coming in from uh, the sky here. And we're just pretending that it is falling on our model as well. Now we can use the stairs to rig a reflector too. Now before I'm going to put the reflector in place, I'm going to attach a safety because it's overhead. I've placed my reflector into the light stream, which is the first step, and then I can orient it. Now I want to use it directly as a backlight. I'm not going to bounce it any further. So I'm just orienting it. I'm quite pleased with the position. Now I've get a little bit of light on the cutting board uh, and the surface of, of the table, but I also am creating a nice little backlight on our model. So here we're using the number two, uh, and I think it works quite well, especially because we have some distance to cover and um, this just carries more punch. But we are actually using the very same light source to provide a scratch on our model. Now, how do we do that? We take some of the light that's traveling up and you'll see that we have a reflector here very close to the ground out of sight um, and we're, we're taking some of the light out and, and what you'll notice is that not everything of this panel is being lit because we don't want to use all the light otherwise there would be no light that can travel upwards towards our backlight reflector so we're just taking a small bit and reflecting it right there we're even using the same stand that we used for our key light, and we're redirecting that light using a number three reflector. And this number three reflector is actually providing our scratch light. And it's just providing some contouring on our model. But let's take a look at another scene in a bathroom. Since this is sort of a beauty scene, we don't want any hard shadows on the face. So you'll see that we have a really nice and soft key, but then we create some energy in the scene with this nice backlight. Now, if this seems like a small bathroom, that's because it is. It even sounds small. Still, we got this looking pretty nice, even though there's hardly any place to put a light. So how did we do that? So we need a key light, but it's very difficult to place a light right next to a cameraman. You need some space to move around and frame his shots. There's not a lot of places we can put it because not only is it small, um, we also have these reflective tiling in there, as well as a mirror, both of which can give reflections and give away the position of our light. So we have to think about this. Now, one place where we can put our light safely is on the floor. And that's what we did. We put a single DLED 7 with a parallel beam attachment pointing straight up. The first thing it does is provide some fill to the room, which is nice because we don't want a very contrasty scene. Still, we want to have a little bit more control than just a general bounce up into the ceiling. And that's where the reflectors come in. You see two reflectors. The first one 
the sort of dull looking one is the number four that's providing our backlight on our model, on Lena. But there's a second reflector, which is a number one, which is the most mirror-like reflector, uh, and it is bouncing some of the light further into the bathroom. Actually, if I just step inside the bathroom stall here, you can see that we have a reflector here, right near the wall. And it's a number three reflector, so it's fairly soft, but not completely soft. Uh, and we've just rigged it with a mini cartilini clamp and some gobo heads. Uh, and it's right up here, reflecting the light that's coming from the number one reflector there. And what is nice to see is that there's not a lot of spilled light here. So the camera can get right up in here without getting any sort of a, a reflection in the lens, etc. And what I really like is that we still have a lot of freedom to move around. And the camera could actually, in fact, follow the model out if we so wanted to. The only thing we would have to change is that we were to rig the lights to the wall. Now, we don't have the right grip equipment to do that, but theoretically that's possible. So it's quite a different way of working. And I hope this video inspires you to rethink the way you're working and incorporate some of this approach into your everyday lighting. It's not something that totally replaces a traditional style of lighting. It's really an addition, especially for small touches, finessing. It's a really, really nice.